at the very root, there's a problem called data governance. And that then manifests itself in, in different ways. One of it is privacy, which is a big concern. The other concern then is analytics. Now, analytics is challenging because of privacy. Now, you could say, oh, so if you were to make analytics simple, I would just get rid of privacy. <laughs> That's not going to work because people want to have their free will. You know, then you're impinging on free will or you're making a totalitarian regime in the That's world. Right. So we have to balance. And at the very root, the fundamental problem around data analytics is less about the tools and the algorithms. Because now we're in a generative world. In a generative world, algorithms don't need to be written by humans. Algorithms can be written by algorithms. So we're going to see an exponential growth on what analytics can happen around us. Humans, sure, humans will have still a role to play. And more and more, human role would go in the field called ontology, which is the semantic of the data, which is in essence linking different concepts together. And if you think of every human has an ontology in their head, that's essentially your mind map. Some people call it a mind map. It's how you organize things in your own brain. And every human organizes things a little differently because that's why lots of challenges happen when one person communicates with another. That word means something else to you. And definitely when you bring in the linguistic dimension, it's even broader in, across languages, but even within the same English language. But in different domains, the word means different things. And I'm bringing this up because the traditional data analytics is the easy part which is number crunching, which tools and algorithms, statistics has existed for a long time, and statistical technologies and tools and AI, traditional, what is called traditional AI. But now what we're seeing with generative AI is applying that to words and language. And therein lies this uh, fundamental challenge of semantic and meaning. So generative AI can be incredibly powerful if it, it knew exactly and precisely what you mean by a certain word in your head. And that's not happened yet. You're slipping into the darkness, as the song goes, because you're talking about chaos theory. Should we be teaching in schools chaos theory, pattern watching, so we can become semantic data managers and leaders? So that's a excellent lens, <laughs> I would say. So it's, it's interesting when you have these conversations to see these different perspectives. If you think about it, early education, again, responsible education, you can't teach everybody everything at a very young age. Their brain is not formed enough to understand things. So let's say we're talking to someone, in, not necessarily in kindergarten, but in middle school. And these days, the exposure to information is so much. People have access to YouTube, social media, and so forth. So their brain has developed a lot more than probably mine was when I was at that age. So we're talking about a different category or generation of people. Yep. And so, yes, in that generation of people, it's extremely important uh, to bring that because the semantic and the knowledge that they're uh, gathering is from the chaos of social media. And social media is extremely chaotic and there's no structure to it. And if you think about data, I try to break data down into three pieces and I call it, what's the data AI is going to eat? You know, just like for humans, we eat food, AI eats data. So if you were to think about what is the food the AI is going to eat, I break EAT as an acronym. I love acronyms. <laughs> so E for entity, A for activity, and T for transaction. Entity, in essence, is anything that you can touch and feel. For example, the cases of this AirPod in my hand, or me as a human, I'm an entity. Uh, you know, this microphone that you have in front of you is an entity. So any physical thing that you can touch and feel is an entity. Uh, it has a boundary around it. Now, activity is the other piece. Activity is essentially anything that we're doing. Like now we're having this conversation. Now, it's hard to say where it started, where it ended. We kind of just intuitively know when Ed has stopped talking and you've started to talk. But some activity is very finite in nature. For example, a click of a button. The understanding of that data in the sense, you know, what is the activity that you're feeding into AI? Are you feeding in a stream of audio or just clicks and data about those clicks and what the user behavior is? And the last piece of it is transaction. The nature of all entity and all activity is essentially to finally consummate in a transaction. You know, you go to a date, so you eventually want to marry the person and so forth. Well, or you go to a store, sometimes you're browsing, but mainly to buy something. And that's the other side, right? So in essence, these are the three pieces of data that AI would need to sort of meaningfully help advance your life. Because what is the purpose, true purpose of AI in the near future, even the far future, is to really enable the way, I, this is again, maybe my time on Wall Street, I think like this, is to truly enable commerce to the next level. And commerce is just efficiency of allocation of resources, all economics. And so if we wanted the most efficient allocation of resources between humans, that's the where the real power of AI comes in. And a simple thing I, I like people to kind of think about and remember in their heads is, imagine this, picture this, right? There is 8 billion people on Earth. 
there is no human way despite social media or all tools and technologies that a human can actually connect with all other 8 billion people because if they were to message this person they would receive 8 billion messages you can't physically and humanly respond to it so i call this the hypothesis of the screen i believe that a world is going to emerge in artificial intelligence where there will be a screen between all humans and so the only meaningful way you would connect with everybody else is through this screen and that will actually help make our relationships better how we interact with other humans that is so revealing and astonishing what you just said i feel like i've made an instant friend in you so i'm going to tell you this i want you to write a book called eat that sounds interesting and funny at the same time (laughs) i'm glad you're laughing but i'm serious i think you should write that because entity activity and transaction that is that you're shifting our perspective and our point of view so would you start on that book this weekend (laughs) <laughs> I have I have two books in, in the works that I'm committed to that I'm far behind on writing, but I will seriously consider this now that you've told me. I think you should reprioritize. I don't even know what the titles are of those other books, but think about what people need now and how you and Intellibus can be the most relevant going forward. So, you know, this speed and adaptability is so important, and here we are as authors we need to get content out there like eat okay that's very well said 